So good to see you today. If you're taking notes, I've, I've titled this message, Help Me, Holy Spirit. Somebody say, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Uh, I'll be looking at John chapter 14 will be our main text today, verse 16 and 17. And I'm excited about this word. I, I believe it's a timely word. I know it has been for myself in preparation. But I'm believing that the Holy Spirit, as I speak, that it's not just man's words. How many know man can't change much? But when the Spirit of God moves, everything can change. And so I want to read these scriptures to you, starting in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. That'll be our main text. And then I'll be jumping around and reading some other scriptures. And I just encourage you this. Maybe you don't normally take notes. That's cool. But today, write these scriptures down at least. If you don't get anything out of the day, at least write down some of these scriptures that are able to impact our life in such a substantial way. But the context here in John chapter 14 through 16 is real important for us to understand what's happening. Jesus is having his last meal with his disciples. It's Passover week. And hours from now, Jesus knows that he's going to be crucified on a cross, that his body's going to be beaten, that he's going to be lifted up on a cross, and that he would give his life for the sins of humanity. How many of you are thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus in your life? How many of you are also thankful that he didn't stay on that cross, that he was buried and three days later he came back to life with power and authority? And Jesus is having this conversation with his closest friends, and he's telling them that he's getting ready to leave. And, and panic and fear is all on them because the one who's been walking with them, the one who showed them the way, the one who was the way, the truth, and the life is saying that I'm leaving you, but he doesn't say I'm just going to leave you alone. He actually says help is on the way. Help is on the way. And this is what it says starting in verse 16. Jesus speaking, he says, and I'll ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate. It's interesting, he says another. In the Greek, that's the word that means one and the same, that he will be like Jesus. And this advocate to help you, there, there are those words, and be with you, I like this, forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and watch this, and will be, future tense, in you. Help me, Holy Spirit. I, I love being around people. Yeah, let me see the people, people in here. You like being around people. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to call it, but I like it. People, people. How many of you like being around people? Okay, about half of you. The rest of you can't wait for this to end. I love being around people because everybody's different. I, I just like that. It wouldn't be so boring if everybody's exactly the same, look the same, act the same, just laugh the same, everything the same, same, same. I like being around people because people are different. And, and I really, I, I think this is so interesting because it's not me. I like being around people, uh, and I think it's interesting for people who, I mean, they have a hard time asking for help. I mean, they don't like asking nobody for help. I want to see who I'm talking to today. If you're in here and you're one of those people, you're determined, and it's not a bad thing, you're determined, man, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, by golly, I'll tear apart this engine if I have to. I'm going to figure this thing out. Let me see, you, you don't like asking for help. Y'all awesome. I, I wish I was more like you, but I'm the complete opposite. I, how many of y'all, y'all like me? You just say help just all the time. You might not even need it. You just say help. You just all the time saying it. I, I, I don't mind asking for help. I, I don't know why, but I just, I, I probably should try a little harder and try to figure it out myself. But if I can't figure something out, I'm telling you, I'm just going to say, hey, can somebody help me, please? Who, who knows what, what's going on here? I don't get this. I don't understand. It. I'll be in the grocery store. Man, I have no shame at all. I can't find something. Man, I'm walking down those aisles. I've got a baby screaming. I'm walking down those aisles. I'm just like, I need, I'm looking for anybody who looks like they might have a clue. I was in Costco last week, and this lady, her, you know, if the, if the buggy is full and that she has like babies all with her, I'm thinking, this lady knows what's up in Costco. 
I said, ma'am, I'm looking for the baby wipes. Where do I go? She says, oh, it's up front. I said, I knew you were a blessing from the Lord. I don't mind asking for help. In fact, it reminded me of a funny story. Years ago, I worked at this place called Peyton's in Cleveland, Tennessee. Y'all don't know about Cleveland, Tennessee, but Cleveland, Tennessee. And I was in school at the time. I was married to Bethany. She was in school. So I'm working part-time here doing school. And it was a warehouse where we unloaded trucks. And these trucks would come in and, and you would open them up and it was, it was for Kroger grocery stores. So we'd go in with the forklift and we'd take the, the pallets out. And it's kind of the manliest thing I ever did, to be honest with you. And so I would do that and I was called a lumper. That was the title that we had, a lumper. That's pretty funny. And uh, I'd go in and do that. But I, I remember there was this guy there that worked and his name was Vincent. Vincent. I'll never forget it. I, I thought Vincent was so funny. And Vincent was one of those people that, that you always heard him before you saw him. He was just loud. How many of you know some loud people in your life? Just loud. It's like Vincent did not have a, a volume to go down at all. It was just loud all the time. And Vincent, he would, every single time that one of the, the trucks would open up, and there's just 18 wheels coming in all day, and one would open up, and if he would look in every single time, if the pallets were broken and boxes were tipped over and things were just a mess, Vincent would say this every single time. He'd yell it. He would say, oh, no. I need some help. Just like that. That was pretty good. You'd be proud of me if you knew Vincent because that was spot on. He would say, I need some help. And I love that because he was saying, hey, I need somebody to come alongside and help me with this situation. I want you to understand something, whether you realize it or not, you need help in your life and I need help in my life to be who God's called me to be and to do what God has called me to do. I, I might not like asking for, you might not like asking for help, but God has a special calling on your life that you need divine help in your situation. And this title, Help Me Holy Spirit, you know how I came up with that? I came up with it real simple. This is the most frequent and common prayer that I pray throughout my day. Help me, Holy Spirit. I need your Help, And this is what Jesus says in this text, which is so great. He says that he is sending an advocate. Y'all call it that? An advocate who is going to come to help us. What's an advocate? An advocate is like a defense lawyer who comes in with you to do this, to defend you and to protect you. You say, why do I need an advocate? Hey, listen here, this is why. Because you and I have an adversary. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that he walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But I've got great news for you today, HPC. You might have an adversary, but your advocate is greater than your adversary. And because he's greater than, hear me, you have the advantage. The Spirit of God was sent by Jesus as an advocate, as a help to come alongside of you. It's a picture of someone running a long distance race and the coach who's in great shape coming alongside of you, encouraging you, and giving you what you need to finish the race that's set before you. How many of you are glad that you have an advocate in your life who is with you and for you? Come on, can you clap your hands if you're thankful for that today? As I was preparing this, sometimes when you, you pray and study, there's, there's something that maybe the Holy Spirit will just drop in your spirit as you're doing so. And this is what I feel like is a real word for somebody today before we move on, is that God has called you and has given you a gift of the Holy Spirit that you and I can be overcomers in this life. That was the word, an overcomer. The advocate that you and I have with us and is for us, he is not weak, he is not frail, he is not intimidated, he is not lacking in any sense, but instead he is with you and for you. And because of that, you and I can overcome the things of this world. And I want this to be like a mind shift for us. 
Because sometimes we'll say that, oh, I like it. I'm an overcomer. But then we don't really feel that, do we? We look around us and we think, man, I don't feel like an overcomer. Look at all these things in my life. But I I pray that regardless of what's happening around you circumstantially, that something's happening on the inside of you that's the Spirit of God, that has given you joy and peace and strength and power, and that you have a real sense that because of Jesus and because of the Advocate, I am an overcomer. Enough of this lack of faith, this lack of hope. Oh, here we go another day. Come on, get that garbage out of here. Oh, I just, I'm going to barely make it by. Y'all could be helping me a little bit more today. I'm just going to barely make it. I mean, maybe God will show up. Maybe God will do something. No, the Bible says that he has showed up. That the advocate has come. And there should be some passion in us. There should be some strength in us, some confidence in us. I'm not talking about arrogance and cockiness. Oh, look at me. But I am talking about this assuredness that the Spirit of God has been sent. Help me, Holy Spirit. I thought about it this way. I thought about when I was a little boy and my dad was teaching me how to swim. Y'all remember that back in the day when you were learning how to swim? Okay, none of y'all know how to swim. I remember I was terrified of the water. My dad would say, okay, David. His name's David, too. Okay, little David. So he calls me, little D. Little David, we're going to get in the water. And I remember thinking, no, we're not. (laughs) I don't like that. And my dad, he had a way of pushing me. And it was good because a lot of times in life, you can be held back in fear. Can I tell you the God that we serve is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind? And my dad, he would push me into things because he knew my tendency was to cower back in fear. And in this case, he would literally push me in the pool. And my dad is like the most buoyant creature ever. Like he can float with a cinder block on his head. I mean, he's just... But my dad, he would, he would get me in that pool and he would teach me how to swim. And, and it didn't take too long to where something that used to terrify me I was no longer terrified of because I had somebody who came along and helped me figure it out. And I'm telling you, you don't have to walk around life with your head down defeated. Does that mean that uh, that difficulty and sorrow and pain and grief aren't gonna happen? Absolutely not. If those things were bad, then Jesus was in sin because he faced them all. But it does mean that even through the valley, that I can have some faith and some confidence and some power in me, that my God is gonna see me through. Y'all getting something out of this today? So what happens when when the advocate comes? Help me, Holy Spirit. What happens? The first thing is this, is his power comes. His power. I want to show you two scriptures here. Luke chapter 24, and then I'm going to read Acts chapter 1, verse 8a. Luke 24, verse 49, it says this. And now I will send, Jesus saying this, the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised, But stay here in the city. Where were they? They were in Jerusalem. He says, until the Holy Spirit comes and he fills you. Somebody say, fills you. He fills you with power from heaven. Next scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 8a. But you shall receive power. There's that word again. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, Luke is the author of the Gospel of Luke and also the Acts the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles. And and Luke says this not just in the Gospel of Luke, but also in the book of Acts. He's, He's wanting to make sure that this isn't missed, that when the Holy Spirit comes, his power comes with it. How many of you repeat yourself to people? When you want them to make sure you, they, they're going to do what you're going to say, you say, hey, I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say it to you again. I'm going to say it to you again. Luke is doing this. My wife does this to me when I go to the grocery store. She will send me and she'll say, hey, David, don't forget the stevias, the zevias, zevias. That's her favorite drink. How many of y'all drink zevias? Anybody? Okay, literally no one. Uh, I, I don't either, but she loves zevias, and, and she will send me texts. Don't forget the zevias. Don't forget the zevias. If I come home with everything but the zevias, guess who's in a bond? Right here. So she's repetitive with it. And I want you to catch this because Luke is repetitive in his language. Not because he forgot he already wrote this, is because he didn't want us to forget what it is that he's writing. And he wants us to grasp the reality that when the Holy Spirit shows up, his power comes with it. 
Now, we believe in a God who is what's called omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, that he's lacking in nothing. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we believe in one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they are powerful in the fullest extent. And this is Jesus saying this is going to happen. The great thing is this, is that a few days later on the day of Pentecost, have you ever heard of Pentecost before? Acts chapter 2. Okay, so Acts chapter two, the day of Pentecost, when it fully come, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon those in the upper room, 120 people, followers of Jesus in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them with great power. And they started to speak in tongues and they started to get gifts of the Holy Spirit and they were empowered to be and do what God had called them to be and do. It was a prophecy that Joel spoke of, the prophet Joel, 600 years beforehand in Joel chapter two. So I think Acts chapter two, Joel chapter two, Acts two, Joel two. That's how I remember, just two and two. And so he prophesied this and it comes to pass. And on that day, the spirit came with power. The problem is this, and this is us today. Many people do not realize that the the power that they have on the inside of them. Many people are unaware that there is something on the inside of them that is stronger than everything outside of them. And this lies the great tragedy. It's not even most of the time necessarily, hey, I don't don't want that. It's just a lot of people just don't know. I, I was thinking about in school, you know, you have your little school list each year. And I remember in elementary school and, and we'd have our, hey, bring the list. You had your three ring binder. Y'all remember that? Some paper, number two pencils. And then one year, out of nowhere, it said, bring a calculator. I thought, what is this? This is before you had phones and you had a little calculator. All just, oh, I have it all right here. No, it, was a, it said calculator. I remember showing up to math class and the teacher says, take out your calculator. I said, yes, I will. And I put it there on my desk and I started doing multiplication problems on the calculator and I thought to myself, this has been available this whole time? (laughs) I've been been barely making it through and there was a calculator I could have been using this whole time. Can I tell you there's a power in you that some of you have not tapped into yet. That it's everything you need. And today I'm praying that there is a mind shift that you realize the Holy Spirit has come to help you and to give you strength and power and help in your moment of need. What does he help us with? A lot of things, but I'm going to emphasize one. He helps us to overcome sin. I was a little nervous. I didn't know anybody was going to say amen. A lot of people did. It's the holy bunch. 11 o'clock going to turn like this when I say that. He helps us to overcome sin. This is a novel thought that God would send his spirit on the inside of us. See, before in the Old Testament, it was written on a stone, but now his spirit has come to live on the inside of you, to empower you to overcome. And in fact, Paul even says it in Romans chapter 8, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then chapter, verse 2, he says, and because you belong to him, speaking of Jesus, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you. Put that on the screen. I want to make sure everybody sees it. Has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. It's coming, I promise. <laughs> it's at least on this screen. You can turn your head around. And go, there we go. Look what it says. The power of the life-giving spirit. Who's that? The Holy Spirit has freed you. What's that mean? It's already been done. Well, I don't know if I believe that because we look around at our own selves and we see our own mess and we're like, man, I don't feel very freed. Can I tell you he has the key to whatever you feel bound up in? Come on, you can help me a little bit more than that. I'm telling you. You don't have to overcome and fight through and struggle in your own strength, your own might, your own ability. He has the key to help you overcome. I don't care what it is. You say, well, you don't know what I deal with. I don't, but God does. And whatever you face, I promise you this, somebody else has faced it before. And it wasn't by their strength, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit they're able to cut that thing off, do away with it, 
Some of you need to start praying a little bit more often when anger comes on you. Ooh. When anger starts to come out of the, ooh, starts to come on you, you need to say, help me, Holy Spirit. Some of you leaving this parking lot today, you need to pray. Help me, Holy Spirit. Don't let this message go in the parking lot and just die there. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, guys, listen to me, men and women, when you, when you feel lust coming on your life and the enemy comes knocking on your door, whoo, why don't you check this out? Why don't you come look at this? Say, no, help me, Holy Spirit. I might not be able to overcome it, but the Spirit in me can help me overcome it. If it's greed, if it's pride, if it's arrogance, if it's jealousy, if it's resentment and bitterness, help me, Holy Spirit. Is anybody with me today? You see that person, man, they offended you, and you just say, woo-wee. I want you, when you see them, you say, help me, Holy Spirit, to love them. I mean, that was a fantastic word last week by Dr. Durham Gray. That was amazing. The love of God. You know what you need to pull off the love of God? You need the help of the Holy Ghost to pull it off. Because just like leaving this parking lot, that love will lead you in a, leave you in a second. You say, help me, Holy Spirit. And this is why I want you to understand this, too. Some of you need to learn to forgive yourself for what you've done. I was thinking about this uh, years ago. I did this, this race called the Spartan Beast. And it was beastly, my friend. I'd been training for it. I'd been running. It's a 13-mile run with 30 obstacles. I'm not trying to press you. I promise you, you're going to see that in a minute. And I was running this race with a couple of friends of mine, Josh Foster, who plays keys, and Aaron DuPont. And we were in Dallas, 13-mile race. And I was running it, and I was feeling good. About mile seven, ooh, I got this. Mile eight, oh yeah. Eight is great. Nine, and then something happened around mile 10. That was funny, wasn't it? You don't even know what happened yet, you laughing. I started feeling like cramps coming on my legs. And I thought, oh man. I thought, oh, this isn't good. And I got up to the next obstacle. It was called the Z wall. Ooh. The Z wall, it's like, it's like rock climbing. And you get on this, this wall and you hold on, you get these little things to hold on to and you put your, your feet on it. And I kid you not, I, I, I'm about a quarter of a way through it. Maybe not even that far. I was barely through it. And I, I go to step with my left leg and I catch a cramp and I fall off the Z wall onto my back. Immediately, this guy out of nowhere runs over to me. Here I am, I'm on the ground. I've been defeated by the Z wall. I'm on the ground and he starts yelling at me, which leg is it? I'm thinking, who is this? But I'm in so much pain, I didn't care. I said, it's my left leg. He starts, and I'm not a touchy-feely guy. I'll give you a hug and a fist bump, but don't be like rubbing on me long. And he starts rubbing on my calf. I was so thankful. I'm telling you, I was like, a little to the left, please. I, to this day, I don't know if that was an angel, a Spartan, like, officiant, or just someone running the race. I don't care who it was. I was thankful they were there. So what does this have to do with anything with the power of the Holy Spirit? It has everything to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you fall down, and you will, his power is there not to kick you in the ground, but to get yourself back up. Don't stay on the ground in sin and iniquity and turmoil. Man, allow the Holy Spirit to reach his hand down. Massage your calf if you have to. But get yourself back up, but you got to learn to forgive yourself. We'll point to our past. Well, God's power is not real in my life. I've done these things. I've done that thing. Hey, th listen to me. We've all done stuff. Some of y'all probably had a, some of you might have had a really rough week this week and you made some bad decisions. You fell into sin. You made choices that were not of God. Listen, all of us have moments like that, but thank God you're in the house today. Don't let the enemy, the adversary say, you're not worthy. You don't deserve it. You'll never be anything. You'll never overcome. Say, get behind me, devil. 
My God says that I'm more than enough. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who gives me strength. And get yourself off the ground. I've got good news for you. I recently ran another race and I came to that Z wall and I said, help me, Holy Ghost. And I made my way through the Z wall. I knew I was going to conquer that thing in this life or the next. And I defeated the Z wall that day. Come on, can you give him praise? His power. Let me, let me close this thing up. His power. Second thing is this, is his presence. Oh, this is so good. It's so good. John chapter 14, verse 16 says this. Jesus speaking, same, same text that we were in before. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. Amen. What? Be with me forever? Forever. To be with you forever. See, in the Old Testament, and some of you guys know this. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon people for a specific task or an assignment. And the power of the Holy Spirit would fall. And then once it was done, the power of the Holy Spirit would leave. But Jesus is saying something so different. He's saying this power of the Holy Spirit that I'm sending with you is not just going to be with you for a moment, but forever. And this, my friend, is a game changer. We have what the men and women of the Old Testament only dreamed to have. We have the power of the Holy Spirit, who in fact, the Bible says this, lives on the inside of us. Check out 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. I want you to see it. It says, don't you realize, Paul says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What was the temple? The temple is where the power and the glory and the presence of God dwelt. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Who lives in you and who is given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. It says that the Holy Spirit lives in us. His presence is with you at all times. Now hear me. Do not limit his presence in your life. You say, what do you mean by that? Sometimes we have this mindset that God's only going to help me if, if I'm like going on a mission trip or if I'm preaching a sermon or singing up here on a platform or starting a small group. And man, those things are fantastic and they're good. But the Holy Spirit is with you to empower you Hear me, in every aspect of your life, every aspect. Don't tuck him away and say, hey, I'll, I'll call on you when I need you. No, 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 no. I need him in everything. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be the husband you've called me to be. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be the dad you've called me to be. Help me, Holy Spirit, in this business deal that you're trying to work out. Help me, Holy Spirit, in my finances. How many of you say amen to that one? Help me in every facet of my life. Some of you are thinking, I don't know about that. I don't know if I believe that. Well, the Bible says this. It says whether you eat or you drink, whatever you do, do it unto the glory of God. And I'm just of the opinion that whatever you dedicate to God, he will be right there with you. Don't limit him and say, well, I just, just in these cases, I'll handle this, God. And here's the thing, you might be able to handle some of it, but you're not gonna handle it as good as he would be able to handle it if he was with you, if he was empowering you. Invite the Holy Spirit. I got a great friend, he's a successful business guy. I just love this guy so much. And he'll, he'll pull off this great deal. And the people in his office come to him and they say, how did you, how did you, How'd you do this? And he says this to him. And I'm not saying you got to say this, but I love that he says this. He says, well, it was my partner. My partner helped me. I say, you don't have a partner. What are you talking about? He says, well, sure I do. The Holy Spirit. Some of y'all think that's weird. It's a little different. But you know what? We need to believe that. We need to know that. And stop living with this mindset that the Holy Spirit's just gonna leave you in any moment. That is sad. Hear me, he's consistent when we're inconsistent. 
He's faithful when I'm unfaithful. He's not, oh, I'm leaving David today. Oh, that little hoodlum. No, he's right there to bring his conviction, his strength, his power, his presence to keep me in the game. Don't limit him. Don't limit him. Listen to me. This is a prophetic word for somebody in here today. You've been limiting God. You've been pushing him back. In the word of God, you've allowed your own opinion or the words of other people to determine your steps. The Bible says that a man thinks, so he is. You are an overcomer through Christ Jesus who gives you strength. You are overcomer through Christ Jesus. Somebody needs to lift up their head right now in this moment. You feel like you'll never be enough, that you'll never be able to be used by God, that your past is too great. I'm telling you, his presence is greater than any pain, any past in your life, any failure. Come on, give him praise if you believe that. He's with you and he's for you. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Come on, just say it out loud right now. Help me, Holy Spirit. I want you leaving this place today. You get in that car, you drive to wherever you're going and you face your first obstacle. It's your own Z wall. Help me, Holy Spirit. And if you fail, then get back up and say, help me, Holy Spirit. His forgiveness is real. He is one who is like Jesus. What was Jesus full of? Grace and truth. The spirit of truth is full of grace. He's with you. He's for you. He will cleanse you. I want to close like this. I, I was thinking as I was preparing this message of when I was a teenager and I was saved. I was living for God. I loved the Lord. But I could just remember this point in time that there was this realization that maybe there was more. That maybe God, through His Spirit, had more for me. And I can remember my, my parents, we had a, a good friend who was in the ministry, and man, he was just, a, he, was, he was a mighty man of God. He really was. I remember one time he was praying for me, and I, I said, hey, my, my left foot, I'm having trouble with my left foot. And he said, I, I kid you not. He said, it's done. The Lord has healed you. And it, I'd had this issue for months. In a matter of days, it was done. I mean, this is serious. God is real, man. His power is real. Don't limit him to say, oh, that's just what he used to do. What, are you kidding me? That's what he used to do? He's too good not to believe. I've seen it with my own eyes. He's still in the healing business and, and setting people free from oppression and addictions and all kinds of chaos. He is still powerful. I remember I just, I, I wanted this guy, I wanted just to be prayed over because I, I wanted everything that the Holy Spirit had for me. And I'm telling you, I, I can just, I can even feel that moment right now. And just as I was a child, I was a teenager, this is God's grace, but I just remember thinking, God, anything that you have for me, give it to me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Like you did in Acts chapter 2. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. And I remember that day, I, he, as he prayed, my parents prayed over me, there was something that came to life on the inside of me. It was like, rivers of living water. Now the Holy Spirit was already on the inside of me. No one could be saved except by the Spirit of God who comes and dwells inside of them, but something came alive. And that's my prayer for you today. Some of you heard this message and some of it's new to you, but I, I want to encourage you. It might be new, but it's definitely real. Don't go through life in your own strength, your own ability, plowing through, work hard, do everything you're supposed to do. But watch the Holy Ghost show up. When you say, help me, Holy Spirit, get ready for help to come. Amen, everybody.